This is Join Us in France, episode 30. Hello, I'm Annie, and today Elise is away. She's off in Brittany this week, having a well-deserved vacation. The poor woman has been working all through the summer. I feel really bad for her. So I hope she's having a great time. And to take her place today, I have invited my good friend, Todd Newman, to join me because he's really fun to talk to and he has a lot of stories. And I really look forward to having him on the show. So hello, Todd. Hi, Annie. Thanks for having me. Oh, you are welcome. Todd is an American writer. He has been living in France for eight years. And, yeah. I've, and I've known you this whole time. I've been keeping an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> he works as, as a writer, and he's also the person behind the Newmans of Legevin blog. Yes. A very fun blog that I mentioned in a previous, uh, I think it was on a Facebook post or something. Mm. And we'll talk all about that later. But for now, let me introduce the topic for today's show. And we're going to be talking about survival French. These are some phrases and expressions that you'll really need to know in France. I've selected a few basic things. You don't need to know that much, but let's have a little music and then we'll get back into it and I'll tell you all about that. Okay, welcome back. So now, survival French. The first thing I have to say is that French people are strange. It's not that surprising, okay? <laughs> They're not that strange, Annie. <laughs> well, w one thing is strange is that if I've seen this happen time and time again with visitors who are Americans. So they come to France, they come visit, and they have practiced the French, and they want to use their French, right? And so we're at a cafe or something, and they want to order something, and they want to say it in French, and they say it in French, and the waiter or waitress more than half of the time responds in English. I've had that happen to me any number of times. Exactly. And so I'm like, okay, this must be a strange country, because I've also heard a lot of stories where if people just use English right off the bat, they refuse to speak English with you. Now, this is something I've heard. It's obviously never happened to me. Uh, all the people who come hang with me know that, you know, use a little French. Try a little French and, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. When in France, try to speak French. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, it's, so it's weird because if you try French with them, you're likely to get English. But if you speak English, you're likely to get nothing but French. <laughs> so... Hmm. So it's, you have to kind of use reverse psychology sometimes in France. I don't know. So it's happened to you a few times, you say? In fact, it was a, a story that I wanted to tell you. This happened, this event happened just a couple of weeks after we first moved to, to France, to Toulouse. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I went into this little store that sells uh, goods related to comic, uh, comic books. Okay. Okay. And our boys were young enough at the time that they were into this. Yeah. So we went into this store, and Margaret, my wife, who even eight years ago spoke pretty good French, went into this store, and the first thing she said was, do you speak English? <laughs> and the gentleman said, no. <sighs> okay. So Margaret and, and I looked around, and we kept looking, and finally she found what she was looking for, but she didn't know how quite to say it. She, and so she went to the store owner and uh -huh. said, je cherche pour un, uh, je ne sais pas le mot, uh, un bowl de matin. So she was looking for a morning bowl. <laughs> yeah. and, and the guy looks at her and says, oh, for cereal, you mean? <laughs> and Margaret goes, oui, oui, c'est ça. <laughs> but he said that in English. Right. Back. And, uh, yes. And so once... You know, Margaret spoke to him in French. Yep. He was super willing to help, and it was great. So, I, 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 so when you were talking earlier about speaking in French, and then they'll reply to you in English, yep. that really it it hit home with me. It happens all the time. And we had visitors recently where the, the, the friend speaks 
really good French. She's a French teacher. So even more reason for her to want to practice her French while she was here. Right. Well, a lot of the time people just responded back in English. So this is the trick, people. If you want French people to speak English to you, just speak to them in, in French to begin with. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and then they will always, almost, not all, not, I mean, if they really don't know any English, then you're going to be stuck with French. But that happens rarely anymore, I would say. You know, people who work in, especially in big cities or people who work in tourism or at an airport or something, they all yeah. speak English. So you probably won't get into trouble. No, yeah. we were, in fact, about a month ago up in Annecy, which is in the Alps. Uh, Beautiful the place. Region. Yeah. And our last night there, Margaret and I and our son went to this pizza restaurant. Uh -huh. And we walked in. Bonjour. Yeah. They sat us down. I think we said bonjour to the, the waitress when she came over. And she said, hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and so the three of us made an effort to speak to her in French the whole night. And every time she spoke to us, she spoke to us in English. I, absolutely. Right. And do you remember we had this experience, the two of us, not so long ago. Uh, he had some paperwork to do f with an administration. Then he mm. asked for help. So I go over there with him to be the translator. And so this is pretty, a pretty technical conversation having to do with taxes and things like that. So, you know, that was... I assume too difficult for you to handle right, that's French. why I needed your translating skills. Exactly. So I went over and I went with him. And so I explained everything to the woman in French using the normal terminology that you use for these sorts of things. And she kept on talking back to you, Todd, yeah. in English with her really bad English. And she <laughs> was right. and she was translating, you know, difficult tax lingo into her broken English and it made no sense whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, I tried to get her to, sp to just speak French with me and then I can explain it properly to him and she wouldn't. No. So anyway, so be prepared. That might happen to you. Um, and if you want that to happen, just speak French to begin with. Um, but there are a few things. Of course, Todd, you know, what is the very first thing you should always say when you address a French person? Bonjour. Bonjour. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I was just in Montreal and in Quebec for a few days. And I noticed that even there, the very first thing they say is bonjour, hello. Oh, and really? they always say it in that, in that order. It's always bonjour first and then hello. Because they don't know when you first approach at a desk or a counter or something. They don't know what language you're going to speak. So uh, they always do it in, in that fashion. And it, it works beautifully. You know, it's the same in Canada and Quebec Absolutely. say bonjour first. Yeah. Yep. It'll really, um, it'll <laughs> really help you not uh, get people mad at you. Okay. Some other words that you need to know, of course, s'il vous plaît, right? Oui, s'il sure. vous plaît is pretty easy to say. I don't know. Is that hard to say it, Lucy? S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Yeah. Okay. I say it's, it's more of a s'il vous plaît, but hmm, you don't need it. They, if you say, and that's the thing with French people. Even if you say it not perfectly, it's okay. They have heard you. They know you're trying. That's all that matters, right? Right. Yeah, have you found a lot of people? I get quizzical looks because <laughs> the problem, the biggest problem that I have when it comes to speaking French is that I know the words, but to pronounce them is difficult for me. Yeah. So I'll, I will say something with my atrocious American accent <laughs> and I'll get this puzzled look and I'll just repeat myself, perhaps a little slower or a little louder. <laughs> and it generally seems to work. Yeah, it works. You have to be patient with people. I mean, if they give you a quizzical look, it's not because they'd hate you or something. It's just that they didn't get what you just right, said. They, you know? they simply didn't understand what I was saying. Right, so I right. try to alter the pronunciation a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Uh, it works. Yeah, it usually works. And you, you get by like that quite well, you know. Did you try to learn French? Did you put a lot of effort into it? When we first came here, uh, my wife's company provided language lessons mm -hmm. for both of us. But Margaret working wasn't able to take advantage of them as much as I was. Mm -hmm. And for the first year, I went, let's say, three times a week for about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. each time that's a lot yeah yeah so it it worked well because i knew absolutely no french when i came over here yeah yeah you know? and again it at least let me learn the words and uh, 
basic idea of how to order them because yeah. French versus the English, syntax is different. The, the syntax is different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so at, at least it, it got so where I felt comfortable work going to the stores, going to yeah. the, the weekly markets, even trying to have a conversation with my neighbors. Yeah. And so it worked. Yeah. And then afterwards, after that first year, um, we had group lessons. Ah. And the thing about that is, one, I was the token American, and two, I was the token male, because <laughs> I think I had two different sets of group lessons, and we ranged anywhere from five to eight people. And again, I was the only male, and I was, you know, the right. only American. So I was a little different, but yeah. you know, and sometimes it's fun to be unique, and, That's and right. I was unique. That's right. That's right. And you stand out in France anyway, because you're taller than your average Frenchman by yeah. quite a bit. I mean, you're not ginormous on it or anything, but you're taller. I'm, I'm six foot four. I don't know. I still don't know what that is in metric. I think it's about a meter ninety-five, yeah. somewhere like that. Which but is quite tall. Yeah. Yeah. Most Frenchmen are what a meter eighty, maybe. You got me. Yeah. Less than six foot. <laughs> I'd say five ten, six foot uh, you know, yeah. tops. So. Yeah. 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 But. And this, one of the things that you said that grabbed my attention is that uh, you said that it's difficult to, for you to say words because mm. it's one thing to learn how to read French, which is, you know, fairly easy for most people. But then it doesn't, it's not a phonetic language. So it's not like Spanish where, or Italian where, you know, you pronounce everything you see. In French, there are plenty of vowels and consonants that they're written, but you don't say them. Right. Um, one of the things, again, that Margaret told me when we came over here, that the word to remember is careful. C-R-F-L. Those are the only letters at the end of a French word that get pronounced. C-R-F-L. If it's any other letter... You don't pronounce it. It doesn't get pronounced. And, you know, oh. it's not an ironclad rule. I but, didn't know this. But for me, it works. <laughs> So I try to remember to be careful. Uh -huh. Chic, chef, cher. Uh, yeah, cher, you do say the R. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, sourcil, your eyebrows, yeah. in, in the South, we do like, say like the I, L. Yeah, like I said, it, it's, not not iron, it, it's not an ironclad rule, right, but right, it works. But it helps, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was told by a French person who was from the North that my French was horrible because I said sourcil instead of sourcil. I'm like, oh, come on. Everybody knows. <laughs> I'd but make a raspberry sound, but I don't want to screw up the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, in French, and maybe if you, are, uh, if you don't really uh, know very much French and you just want to use this uh, podcast to memorize a few things, which is a good way to go, you know, just memorize them. Don't look at them how they're spelt because it will throw you off if you see mm -hmm. it spelled. It's the same in English. Oh, I absolutely. Add. English is not pronounced at all like like, like it's, it should be. <laughs> well, like it's written anyway. Yeah. If you're good with your memory, just use your your memory. Especially a word like s'il vous plaît, you know, I I don't know. Uh, uh someone who doesn't know might say the t at the end of s'il vous plaît, right? right? And it's never pronounced. No. That one never say it. No, there's no t in careful. Exactly. <laughs> 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 that's right. That's right. Okay, so another one that you have to use all the time is merci. Oui. Right? Merci. Listen, there's an R in it. If you don't say it perfectly, who cares? Merci, merci, fine. It's fine. People know what you're saying. Uh, au revoir, of course, is... Uh, I still don't think I know how to pronounce that cor okay, correctly. Okay, try, try it, try it. Au revoir. Ah, yeah, you don't, but it no. works, right? People know what you're saying. Yeah. So I never noticed, but yeah, it's au revoir. Oui. But yeah, it doesn't matter. You do, if you do, even if you don't say it exactly, right, people know what you mean, it's, it's fine. Uh, another one is bonsoir, right? Oui, always. Uh, you know, French people are not very picky as to when bonsoir starts. When is bonjour, of course, is most of the day. Bonsoir is going to be like... What, after dark, maybe? B to me, it's been funny. Uh, after 6 p.m., so 1,800 hours, um, yeah. people tend to say bonsoir, yeah. even if the sun is up. And for me, if it's light, I say bonjour. There you go. Yeah. Say too. It, uh, be be it might be because the day is over, the work day is over for them or something. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. But for me, if it's light out, it's bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I think that's my rule too. It works. Yeah. It works. Um, another thing that visitors are going to need, I think, is je ne comprends pas. Okay. Right? Sure. You, you might need to say that. Um, and it means I don't understand. Um, because if, if somebody really doesn't speak English and they keep repeating something in French that you don't know, just tell them. Ah, je, ne je ne comprends pas. Right. Je ne comprends pas. It's pretty simple and... Or if they just said it too fast or too soft, you just say, répétez, s'il vous plaît. In fact, I, I'll, I'll wait because I know you, you, no, there's ahead, another ahead. expression you're going to, to say about, about lentement. Oh, so, lent yes, yes, lentement is, or plus lentement, s'il vous plaît, ouais. would be good ones. But tell us your story. My story is that I think in my neighborhood, my nickname is Monsieur Lentement. <laughs> <laughs> because... Again, even after eight years, I, I always tell people, je suis un nul American. I'm just a dumb <laughs> American. So, répétez, s'il vous plaît, un peu plus lentement. So, repeat that, please, just a little <laughs> more slowly. <laughs> and I end up doing that, I think, almost every day with my neighbors. But mm -hmm. at least I'm speaking French with them. And That's good. You know, so, so I, do your neighbors enjoy. not speak English? Um, I have one neighbor who speaks English and it's kind of funny because she is French but she's taking and she's a little older than me so she's in her let's say late 50s mm -hmm. she's taking English lessons ah. and so what we do is she speaks English to me and I speak French to her perfect yeah <laughs> and you know it works so she gets her practice I get my practice yeah. and I, I end up doing the same thing when I go for my haircut because the, the young girls there are they have uh, English speaking clients and they want to practice their English. And I keep telling them I need <laughs> practice of my French. So and it, it works. And I do the same thing with my doctor and with our veterinarian. That's right. Yeah. 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 So they get to practice. I get to practice. It's a win-win. This happens a lot. French people um, often, especially waiters or whatever, if you say, well, but I would like to practice my French as well. I want to practice my English. You know, they, yeah. they, they, they want to do that, of course. It's, it's natural. Well, it helps them. And obviously, you know, for someone like me who lives in France, you know, <laughs> I mean, you have to be able to speak French. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And for me, again, the big thing is to speak. I, I need them to speak slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, my ears just don't work as fast <laughs> as they should. And In French, anyway. <laughs> no, not for when it comes to French. Plus lentement, s'il vous plaît, is very, very handy. Répétez, s'il vous plaît, is also very handy. Or instead of répéter, s'il vous plaît, you could say pardon. You know, which is like, mm -hmm. huh? Uh, pardon? Yeah. Um, you could also, also say quoi, but that's not very polite. So And I've also said comment. Or comment, yeah, mm -hmm. comment. Yeah, that works perfectly. J just one word, instead of répéter s'il vous plaît or je ne comprends pas, you can just say comment. Oui. And if you put the right tone into it, they'll know that, you know, you just... Yeah, you just kind of screw up your eyebrows, you know. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Comment? Comment? <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that uh, is very important in France is that if you run into a problem, French people will go all out to help you if you ask. So if you say, j'ai besoin d'aide, s'il vous plaît, you are going to be amazed how many people will want to help you. Most French cities, people, they, they know right away that you're a tourist. I mean, yeah. you stand out, right? As a tourist, they can tell. They spotted you already. So if, and if you approach someone and say, j'ai besoin d'aide, s'il vous plaît, they will do all sorts of things to help you. That's, I've, I found French people to be super helpful. But if they see you struggling with something and you don't ask anyone, they might not help you. They, they might not, you know. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. They, they're not going to come forward and, you know, they see you struggling with your suitcase. They might not grab it for you. Maybe they some will, but nah. Um, but if you say, j'ai besoin d'aide, s'il vous plaît, because I really can't do this, like, somebody will do it for you, I, I think. Just ask for help. Yeah, it's better than saying, a little help, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> or if you say, um, j'ai un problème, that's a good one to learn. You know, j'ai un problème, meaning I have a problem. 
uh, for instance, if you're at your hotel and uh, there's something wrong with a room or something, and it would be a little strange if the person at the hotel didn't speak English, but who knows? Maybe it's a cleaning lady or, or, or maybe you're personal. in a small city, R right? Or, or maybe it's a plumber. like a bed and breakfast kind of place, R right? Or, yeah. or a plumber who you know he's just there to do the plumbing. He's not there to <laughs> greet the guests. He doesn't know English. <laughs> So, or maintenance person, you just say, j'ai un problème, and then, it, you know, they, they will understand. The thing that happens to me all the time when I travel, and I don't know about you, is I never know where the metro is. I never know where anything is. Like, I have a map. I, we have a Google map. You get out of the bus or the metro, and you're like, well, where do I go now? Left, right, behind me? Where, you know? So, it, something that's super important to learn is, où est or où sont, and that means where is or where are, right, okay? Right, With that, you can say all sorts of things, like, où est le métro, s'il vous plaît? Uh, où sont les taxis, s'il vous plaît? You know, where, where are the, where's the metro? Where, where are the are taxis? taxis? Uh, où sont les toilettes? Yeah, where's the bathrooms? Yeah, very important. <laughs> you will need those soon yeah. enough. So, um, it, it's really important, où est, où sont? You, uh, and of course, you might make the mistake. You might not like the bathroom. In French, bathroom is it's plural. Who knows why? Où um, sont les toilettes? Yeah? Okay. Except that in Canada, it's où est la toilette? <laughs> it's a different gender and it's singular. Okay. That one surprised me, but that's how they say it, so good enough. Um, but in France, it's où sont les toilettes? We, that's, that's how we say it. Um, let's see. Well, tell me about bathrooms in France. Have you found that to be particularly difficult finding a bathroom or do you always manage and it's not a problem? There's always McDo's, which is <laughs> French for McDonald's. So, <laughs> yeah. and there's a McDonald's every, in every city, but. Or a subway. Anymore. Yeah. I, I, no, that hasn't been a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Most, some people say, oh, it's a terrible problem finding a bathroom in France, but. Sometimes it is, depending on where you are, you know, you just, but if, what I tell friends and family who visit is just go get a cup of coffee somewhere right. or a drink or go to a brasserie or, yeah, go to brasserie or a cafe, get a cup of coffee, sit down. That's right. And then you can use the bathroom, rest your feet and you'll be fine. You know, yep. uh, if you're trying to go super cheap and not buy anything, then that's the problem, you know. Yeah. Sure. I suspect most of the people who are listening to this podcast are going to be fine with buying a cup of coffee, you know, or, or soft right, two drink euros or for a coffee. And yeah, it's not a big deal for most yeah. people. Yeah, but that takes me to the other thing: is uh, combien ça coûte? Ah. Yes. Ou bien c'est combien? Like how much is it? In France, just remember it's combien c'est or combien ça coûte. Okay. Yeah. Do you the only other expression I've heard used, and, and I know I've used it, is uh, "qu'est-ce que c'est le prix?" Que, yeah, quel est le prix? Yeah, yeah. That's another. That's another way to. Yeah, prix being for price. Yeah, prix right. is price or combien? How right. much is it? How much? Combien, combien ça coûte? Combien ça coûte? Yeah, ou combien right. c'est? Ou c'est combien? I think if you say "c'est combien," everybody's gonna know. Right. There's never any, you know. Okay, you can always ask. People, if they speak English, but like you told us at the beginning, it might not help you very much. No, I would say at least try. Just yes, just try. And in, as, as soon as most shopkeepers or restauranteurs hear you trying to speak in French, they will be really helpful. That's right. So yeah. before you go to parlez-vous anglais, which is do you do, speak do English? not make that your first. Do, sentence do anywhere. not do not that is a terrible thing to do and i mean margaret survived it yeah. the guy didn't you know nothing bad happened but she certainly didn't get help no she was not going to get help exactly the way you know starting out do you speak english yeah uh, but again once she made an effort to speak french the guy was great and wrapped up 
yeah. you know, the, the the bowls. He was just as helpful and yes. courteous and polite as as exactly. could be. Exactly. And, well, and all it took were those whatever eight words, you know. But honestly, if I walked up to, I don't know, like I was in New York this summer. If I walked up to someone at the Metro, the MTA, or MA, Yes, Metro, Metro Transit. MTA. Yeah, Metro Transit Authority, you know, and I just spoke French. Do you think that would go over well? <laughs> no. No, it wouldn't. I no. mean, it's just, it, to me, it's common sense. And granted, English is the lingua franca all over the world, but still, you just, just in France, make an effort to say at least bonjour, at least. Uh, I know, like, when we do our travels and we go to different places, we've been all throughout Europe and we've North Africa, and we always make it a point to learn how to say please, thank you, hello, goodbye, in whatever the local language is. And I don't know, maybe we've just been lucky, but people really seem to appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you learn is 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 gravy, but if you can just do hello, goodbye, please, and thank you, it's been really helpful. So let's do them again in French. Hello, bonjour, hello. goodbye, au revoir, uh, please, s'il vous plaît, right. and thank you. Merci. Merci. There <laughs> you go. Four words. Come on, you can do this. It's easy. Um, okay. The other thing that happens, and I alluded to this earlier, but I didn't finish my thought, is uh what direction things are you know uh, like you get out of the metro and you don't know am i going straight or what what am i doing um so it's dans quelle direction so you can just say le louvre c'est où you know like the louvre is where uh, le louvre est dans quelle direction if you want to make a whole sentence but you know if you if you just say the name of the place you're looking for, like, uh, I don't know, you're looking for the Eiffel Tower. Okay, who would not know <laughs> what direction? <laughs> that was a bad example. That's a bad example, that Annie. That was a bad example. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if you're under a tree. <laughs> yeah, stick with the Louvre. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Louvre. You know, you're like, hey, I'm out here. Where is it now? Which, you know, is a possibility. Um, you just say, le Louvre. Où, s'il vous plaît. That's enough. Yeah. You don't need to make a big sent syntax, uh, you know. Or you could say, où, or à quel endroit? You know, in what place, à quel endroit? Uh, that's, too, that's too challenging for me. <laughs> I would just say, où est le Louvre? Où est le Louvre? Vous plaît. There you go. Où est le Louvre, s'il vous plaît? Perfect, perfect. Also, you might need to know what time things are. Like, uh, you know, if uh, your hotel has some sort of... Uh, Pre-dinner drink or something. I don't know. You just, okay. Yeah. You just, à quelle heure? Quelle heure? À quelle heure? Right? Yeah. Or, quand? Quand? When? Yeah. Quand? Like, uh, there's maybe there's an event coming up and you don't know what time it's going to be. So you can say, c'est quand? Exactly. Yeah? Ou bien c'est à quelle heure? That way, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, to, to do that, to get understood anyway. Now, there's something you should not say. Um, and what's that, Annie? <laughs> you shouldn't say salut to anybody. Because I see it. I, I looked at lists of survival French, and they all include salut, you know, and that's the way, that's the informal way to greet people. So instead of bonjour, someone would say right. salut? Don't do that. Because you don't know when it's appropriate and when it's not, being a foreigner. So mm. I, I cannot imagine a foreigner ever being in a situation where they can use that. Unless you're 12. <laughs> 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 if you're 12, you can get away with it, or under, or younger. <laughs> Peut-être, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, don't say that. It's, it's, not, um, it's not appropriate for, for visitors, I don't think. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, French is a little tricky because we have formal and informal we have the tu and the vous, yeah? Exactly, yes. I, I wouldn't worry about that for just a tourist. It, even if you get it wrong, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to be offended. As a matter of fact, in Canada, it's like the vous is gone. They don't really, really? use it. No. They, okay. 
Now, between themselves, they don't use it. Um, I think if they're addressing French people, they know that they're supposed to be more <laughs> okay. formal. But otherwise, they, they don't. I didn't hear it, you know. So um, I don't think that's a big deal. Just don't worry about it. If you, if you know how to do two, do two. If you know how to do vous, do vous. Learn one or the other. If you're going to be mostly in France, learn vous. It works most places. Right, right. And if you're going to be mostly in Canada, two is what they use. So I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're very informal in Canada. Uh, it's it's actually very nice. I yeah, I thought it was it was lovely. So I'm at the end of my list. I mean, I have another list, but it's it's getting too long. So, okay. So I want to talk about your blog now, and your and your. I would say one one last oh, thing. Okay, okay. Before we moved over to France, yeah. Uh, Margaret's colleagues told us the most important word in French is ça. Ça? <laughs> yep. Uh, all it means is that. Yes. So if you're in a store and you see something that you want and, it's, you know, behind glass or something, ça, s'il vous plaît. That's right. That's what they told me was the most important word. Uh, now, I, 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 I tend to disagree now after having been in France for a while. Bonjour. That yeah. to me is, is the, but you, you say that and it really opens doors. I mean, literally. Oh, there's another one that I thought of. Sorry. It's um, okay. Um, Okay, this, is, this used to be a big deal 10 years ago. It's not so much anymore. But if an American goes into a cafe or a brasserie or something and they want the menu and they say le menu, there's a bit of a problem because in France, le menu is the daily special. It is okay. not... The full menu. The full menu where you would read the items and pick something. So what S words should they use? La carte, s'il vous plaît. So remember, in, in English, you will say à la carte, you know, where you pick out, do you want this or this or that? That's the word you want in France. It's la carte, s'il vous plaît, for your menu. And But if you want this for the menu that you will then pick things out of. But if you want the daily special, you ask for le menu. Okay, but the reason why I said it's not so much a problem anymore is because more and more French restaurants say le plat du jour for the menu, for the daily special, le plat du jour. And it used to be that they always said le menu, but now it's disappearing. So right. maybe, but anyway, if you want to look at the, all the items and if you want to choose something, don't ask for the men menu, the menu. That's not what you want. You want la carte, s'il vous plaît. So, do you, do you find it difficult ordering food in restaurants and understanding the, the menus and no, all of that? Not really, because, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't take that long after a while to learn the basic, you know, yeah. food groups. You know, <laughs> poulet, poisson, <laughs> bœuf, uh, whatever. It, yeah. it doesn't take too long. So, you, you, if you know you want chicken, you look for poulet. Yes. <laughs> um Obviously, they're cooked any number of ways, but yeah. for me, reading French has not been a problem. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest challenge that I have is understanding oral French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the list that you, you just said it, but quickly. So it's poulet for chicken, yeah. uh, poisson for fish, right. uh, buff. buff for, for beef. beef, and... Um, and then pork, so P O yeah. P O R C. Pork, yeah, yeah du pork. Or, or in if you're in the southwest, you will have canard as well, which is duck. How could I forget? <laughs> yeah. We do eat a lot of canard around here, so yeah. yes, they're afraid to run away from us. <laughs> 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 the ducks run away when they see us. Yeah. Okay, now let's let's get to your blog. You okay. have been writing this blog for a long time. Yep. Um, Goodness, almost eight years. Uh, started a few months after we moved here. Uh -huh. uh, I was looking for something. I, I, I used to write when I was living in the U.S., and so I was looking for a way to basically you know, keep up my skills. Uh, mm -hmm. And so at the suggestion of my wife, I started Newman's of Legavan. Yes. And for the people out there listening, Legavan is a small town, probably probably about 15 kilometers, about 10 miles west of Toulouse. Right. And it's where we have lived since we've 
been here. Mm -hmm. And most, the the two stories are, there are two themes really to the blog for the most part. One is a a travelogue because we have visited a lot of places since we have been here. Yeah, I think you make more effort than most people. I mean, most weekends you go visit something, it seems to me. We try to, Mm -hmm. um, especially when the boys were were both with us. Uh And then the, the second aspect or theme is just, everyday life in France. I mean, nothing special, just being a a dumb, non-French speaking American (laughs) trying to survive and and hopefully thrive in in France. And and really, I mean, we have met some absolutely wonderful, wonderful people Uh here. So it's been a great experience. And really, the, the blog was a way at first for us to you know, to let our family and our friends back in the States know what we were doing. Sure. And since then, I have been impressed with the number of hits and the places that people have searched out Newman's of Legavan for one reason or another. (laughs) And I have to say that the biggest, uh, let's say, uh, source of hits has been people who are looking for what is called American Week at Lidl. <laughs> Lidl is is a discount uh, grocery store uh, based in Germany, but they're all over Europe. And, it's, yeah. and, and Lidl is L-I-D-L. So I've heard people pronounce it Lidl, Lidl, Lidl. I mean, we just yeah. call it Lidl. But, yeah. um, and every, I don't know, four months, five months, they do what they call American Week. That's right. And so <laughs> you, you can get all sorts of things that are American or at least that, Lidl says are Americans. Uh, <laughs> hot dogs in a jar. I still can't get over that one, but that's one of the the big hits for. Especially when you can get yeah. perfectly good hot dogs not in a jar yeah. in France. Right. You don't right. need them from the jar. No, yeah. and it's the same thing in the U.S. Though I mean, you get eight hot dogs in a jar and six buns in the pack, so <laughs> <laughs> they never match up. You know, no. you, you've got to buy what uh, twenty four <laughs> to, to make it work, and it just doesn't just doesn't work that way. It's good but, for large families. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you eat 24 hot dogs, you will be large. Yeah. <laughs> some of the some of the peop, some of the stuff that French people think are typical American foods. Well, it's like the things that Americans think are typical French foods, I suppose. Mm-hmm. You know, we have misconceptions. But the American week at Lidl. I don't live near Lidl, so I don't go very much, but um after reading your very good blog, I yeah. decided I got to see this for myself. <laughs> And they have some strange things. Oh, they certainly do. They have, uh, they, like, they will sell you uh, napkins with uh, the American flag on it. Or the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> or, like, a picture of the Grand Canyon or something on it. Yeah, yeah. just a- anything that they can somehow twist into this could possibly be <laughs> American-related, that they'll, they'll do. Pretty na- nasty brownies they, um, yeah. they will um, <laughs> put in, in there. Um, what else do they do? They don't do anything Mexican. Uh, no, that's not true, Annie. They, do? Again, it's, it's not as often as American Week, but they will do it. But oh, the, but, okay, but what I meant is they don't include any Mexican food. No, in, not during in, American Week. Right, right, no, right. No, right, no, right. No. They, but they also do a Mexican Week, is yeah. what you said. Yes, yep. yes, yes. They do. Yeah, French right. people are not super adventurous when it comes to food. No, I've <laughs> discovered that French um, tastes do not run towards spicy. No, yeah. not spicy and not very ethnic. Like, yeah. you know, it's fun to be in America or in Canada yeah. because of all the ethnic restaurants you can try. Uh, you know, and, and that just makes me, uh, you, you reminded me of something. You talk about ethnic sections. I mean, you go to a grocery store in the U.S. and you go to the ethnic section. It could be, you know, Chinese food, could be Mexican food. I don't know, Norwegian, Korean. you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Over here, you go to the big uh, hypermarches, the supermarkets like uh, yeah. Leclerc, and you go to the ethnic section, and the ethnic section could be American. Yeah. And what do you have there? Marshmallow fluff, peanut butter, <laughs> and tacos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's pretty much a, That's about the ethnic section for, yeah. for Leclerc. Oh, this, and it's, it's uh, pretty bad. Some stores, uh, kosher food, they put in the ethnic section. Yes. God, I don't think I've ever seen kosher food. 
in the in it's, the Leclerc that I go to. It's okay. really hard to find. It's it's not something that's yeah. um, easy to find. Unlike uh, halal food, halal food, which is uh, everywhere. Yeah. Um, that's just a difference in the number, you know, in the sure. population numbers. Um, there are a fair amount of Americans here, but they they seem to blend in the background. But once in a <laughs> while, they want to get your dollars, and so yep. or they just want to throw in an event. You know, they just want to put together some sort of sure. event, and so like uh, it's going to be like the fourth of um, It's going to be uh, what do you call it? The first weekend of September in America, Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. Well, it's that sort of thing, except that French people they will do some sort of Americana kind of event whenever <laughs> it doesn't yeah, like, I, I don't know the rhyme or reason it just seems to be about every four months or so that, that they'll do this and, and, and so you get a lot of hits for that uh, yeah, because people are article. always looking because i'll um, because lita will almost always offer at least one or two new products during uh -huh. american week and so when the circular comes you know when the advertisement comes in our mailbox I'll scan it, make a picture of it, put it on the blog and say, well, here's what we got this time. Or here's, <laughs> you know, we couldn't find it uh, this time. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> but, so I, I don't know. I've probably got maybe eight, ten stories about American Week at Lidl. And, <laughs> and it's just amazing. You, you look works. at the search engines, Lidl, American Week, poof. And then, <laughs> there you are. You yeah. rank for that one. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. I don't care how they get there. <laughs> and But also your website is really good to get a lot of... Um, you visit some villages that are really small yeah. um, that most... I mean, that no travel writer ever writes about. Yeah, France has this um, organization of... I, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, it is a tourist-related uh, organization. They call it the Plubo Ville de France, the most beautiful villages of France. Yeah, and, village, yeah. and I got to be honest with you, half of them are really pretty, and the half, I think, just someone in the town knows someone <laughs> on the board, you know, because <laughs> you go in there like, what is the big deal? Um, but, you know, there are, God, it's got to be 30 of them within an hour, an hour and a half drive yeah. of, of Toulouse. So yeah, I, yeah. I think we visited. All of we them. have visited most of them, if yeah. not all. Yeah. And you know, even if it's really not that great to look at, it's an easy day trip, and and they usually, you'll still see something, anyways. Yeah, and they usually have somebody uh, in the tourist office. They usually, even if it's a tiny village, because most French villages do not have a tourist office of any sort, you know, no. obviously. But if it's a plus beau village, usually there's a, one person sitting at a desk somewhere right. to welcome the public but of course it's you know between specific hours so if you happen to show up after 5 p.m yeah. tough out of luck yeah, pretty much yeah. she's but, gone home <laughs> yeah but again most of these places are really small you know i yeah. mean less than they you know a thousand people yeah i so think they have you can to walk be, the, the entire village yes and, i think that's one of the criteria is you have to be under a thousand uh inhabitants or maybe it's under two thousand yeah, it could be i can't remember but, what the criteria is but there are there are very strict criteria and you can't uh you know deviate from those and apparently when i interviewed another um friend uh, laura k she told us of the plus beau detour which is not as well known. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. But it's, right. it's like the most beautiful drives. Or... Well, like a detour. So I go off the main road. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, and those, the criteria is not as stringent as far as the number of inhabitants. So th that's the problem with the most beautiful villages is it's an incentive for them not to grow. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you want the tourist to come but maybe there are actual french people who want to come live in this village <laughs> but you know the, a lot of the ones at least here in, in the toulouse area in the southwest region they can't really grow because they're walled cities or walled towns that's so true. That's there a good just point. isn't the room yeah that's a good point and yeah. and if you ever wonder why all these cities because elise often talks about when they tore down the wall, you know, Paris used to have a very restrictive wall. Toulouse did. Mm -hmm. uh, all the major cities did. And they had to tear it down at some point or the city couldn't grow. You know, it's right. just not 
practical to have a wall around you and say, no. oh, everybody else, you're out. <laughs> no more people here. Right. But that's what Primo Village essentially is doing. And so I think it's good and bad. You know, I'm sure there, there's got to be some of the locals saying, hey, why can't I get a building permit? And it's just because we're just at the threshold and we want to stay at Plumo Village, you know? Okay. It's got to happen. I don't, I don't know of any cases, but no. I'm just, I'm just, uh, so what else do you find on your blog? Do you have, do you have like, would you say it's more like, um, uh, tips of people who want to live in France? Do you have a lot of that? Um, for me, I, I just try to write stories for something that is unusual, something that, that catches my eye. Yeah. Um, yeah. For example, I, I wrote to your husband and put on uh, Facebook about the French driving school yes. uh, story that was in the New York Times recently, yes. and David you know, too, had, yeah. had had passed the the course in in French. I, I was really <laughs> impressed with him, um, and that just made me think. While I was reading that story, and I had written about this on the blog, where I'm driving down the highway and I look over on the other side. And there is a column of army trucks. Uh, I don't know what you would call them. Um, yeah, they're just really, you know, big size yeah. trucks. Yeah. And it says Ottawa Cole <laughs> on them. <laughs> and and I was like, you know, join the army and learn how to drive. That's right. And, and but apparently that that's what they do. Yes. Uh, you, you can. So if you want to join the army at eighteen, you don't have your driver's license, you can get behind one of these big, big trucks. old trucks. And yes. they, and so they got in a little camouflage, you know, sign on the front. Uh -huh. Oh, so we call. <laughs> all right, all right. That's something I don't think I'd ever see. So now, now what I'm waiting for is to see a tank bopping <laughs> down the side of the road with auto e coal. And it doesn't matter. You, you, as long as you can keep the thing going, you pass. <laughs> the, the tank wins. Well, actually, my father never learned the signs. Uh, he never did because he... At the time, all the men had to go to into the French army. It was mandatory. And it was at the time of the Algerian War. And so he was not only he did, did he do his uh, two years in the army that were mandatory, but he wasn't then, he, I don't think you could, you'd say enlisted. He didn't enlist. He was uh, no, drafted. No, it's compulsory service. He was drafted, yeah. Um, and... Th and so he took out he t he got his driver's license in the French army, mm -hmm. and as a result, he never learned the signs because um, I don't know how it was organized. This I mean, my, my father has passed away; so it's, it's been years, but um, it, it's been more than sixty years, uh, sixty-five years, or something like that. So it was a long, long time ago. I, I don't know, but he it told me one day that he never actually learned the signs. He just learned how to drive and well, again if you're driving a tank who needs a sign <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. who's gonna argue with you <laughs> right yeah. away yeah i got that yeah. i've got that <laughs> i got that yes <laughs> um and he learned how to drive these humongous uh, army trucks you right. know and he was all like woohoo <laughs> yeah, right i mean that's what i said you could be driving down the highway you know just a couple of clicks west of toulouse and you see a half a dozen army trucks and all of them have got auto e coal on it <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. Yeah, going into the army is not mandatory anymore, so they have to recruit somehow, right? Yeah. They have to find a, a cat, I mean, a, something to grab the young people. Right. Join eventually. the army, learn how to drive a stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it works. Did so, you know how to drive a stick before you came here? Yeah. Oh, good. In fact, I, I, I learned on an army post. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I learned on an army jeep how to, how to drive a stick. I have oh, a there. very forgiving transmission. <laughs> What no. about Margaret? Is no. She, no. No. She's still on a... Margaret uh, only drives automatic. Automatic, yep. yep. That one. She's a very petite woman, you know. Yeah. Oh, but there's plenty of petite French women yeah. who can drive a stick. No. <laughs> Has nothing to do with it, really. <laughs> no. But, yeah. you know, just to get back to your uh, yeah. your question, probably, like I said, half the, the, the stories that I do are about living in France, and the other half are just our travels. And as I said, we've been pretty much all of at least central to western europe and yeah many other places as well yeah i think and it's well because you visited so many places i think if you're looking for information on kind of out of the way places that you're having a hard time um finding is your blog is worth a try so i'll i'll put a link okay. to to your blog and on, thank on. you what we try to do is that if 
there are places that we have stayed at hotels or bed and breakfasts that we've liked. There's always a link in the story uh-huh. to that place. Same thing with restaurants that we've been impressed with. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So if anybody's really kind of looking for travel tips, at least for what Newman's of uh, Legavan like, right? We've 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 got them <laughs> and. Again, if and you put you put a new story up there maybe once a week, ten days or something. I mean, it's pretty regular. Well, it depends, but mm. I mean, when I wasn't working as much as I am now, yeah. I was doing a couple of stories a week, and now it really kind of depends on how yeah, work is going. How much time you have? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, all right, okay. I think we've come to the end. C'est tout. That's all. C'est tout. Fini. Well, thank you so much for for uh, agreeing to come on such a short notice because this week we, uh, Elise and I, had decided that we were not going to release an episode because uh, we re- we we recorded a whole bunch of them in June and early July okay. f- to last us through the summer, and then we ran out of time. Um, Elise didn't have time to do the research, and I didn't have time to do the recording, so we ran out of time. So we thought, oh, we'll just skip this week, and then I thought, oh basic French and I'll invite Todd because he's so he's he's got so much to say about uh, when it comes to basic French I'm your guy (laughs) you want advanced French you got to go somewhere else (laughs) no but I think you do just fine you just I just tell people that I'm sorry but my brain is full I just I can't (laughs) learn any more French I'm too old my my brain is full but at least you try I mean I I do I know a few people who've lived in France, yeah. uh, you know, Anglos who've lived in France a long time, and they don't even try. And they get by just fine, too. I mean, you know, it's possible. All it's we're more saying, difficult. It's more difficult, but it's possible. All we're saying is always, always, always start with bonjour. Even if you don't <laughs> say another word in French, always bonjour. And then everything else will be fine. And even if you say it wrong, who cares? Like... Yep. Uh, just make the the little effort. Just make that little effort, yeah. and and you will be really impressed with how well you are treated by the French people. And and then ça, that's a good one. Ça. I like that ça. Yeah. <laughs> ça and point. Je veux yeah. ça. <laughs> yeah. Je voudrais ça. I would like that. And you know, uh, France is getting uh, a little bit more Ameri- like America, which in my book is a good thing. I'm sure Elise would say that's a terrible thing. That oh, terrible. Yeah, but she's not here. <laughs> that's right. So I'll say it on her behalf. <laughs> but I think it's a good thing. And I think more and more restaurants that cater to tourists, where they know perfectly well that they have tourists coming by all the time, they have you know menus in different languages or pictures of the food on uh-huh. the menus even. yeah i've seen that too yeah so that's that's really helpful i think i don't know why they don't do that more because mm. even for french people you know it doesn't hurt if you see a picture of it right All right <laughs> so um so that's i think that's a that's a good thing but anyway i'm i'm digressing again but yes always say bonjour and uh, you'll you'll be happy and People will Bonjour, et s'il vous plaît. Et, et si merci. Et merci et ouais. au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah. We do say that a lot, though. Yeah. But if you, for some reason, I wish I could, like, analyze p- French people's brains. You know, why are we like that? Why are we so put off if somebody doesn't try to say something in French first? But I think it's the same thing if you are an American. I, I don't know if you're a Brit, if it's the same, but you know, if you're an American, someone comes up to you and, and speaks French or Chinese or German without saying hello first, you, you close off. Maybe that's all yeah. it is. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's just yeah. human nature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've solved it. <laughs> Todd, we solved it. <laughs> Our work here is done. <laughs> time for time for a glass of wine, Annie. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And we'll talk to you next week. And next week, Elise will be back. Thanks, uh, Annie. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you.
Thank you.